you're lucky, 10% of the time, the new M3 Touring is all about this. But 90% of the time, it'll be about, well, the everyday stuff, like this. Yes, with 500 litres of space with the seats up and another 1,010 litres with the seats down, the M3 Touring has got you covered for the practicalities, just as surely as a 320D Touring would. But even on a trip to the shops, that's where the comparisons with more mundane models ends. It does still feel special to drive every day this as well. There's no soundtrack particularly, which is annoying and would be would be nice if there was something more to listen to other than the excellent Harman Kardon stereo which comes as standard. But there are all the little M badges for a start which are very nice and then there are these seats. Yes these are an option and quite an expensive one at that but they're just so worth it. I know they take away a little bit from the practicality because they've got those glossy carbon fibre backs which if you have small people in the back of this car they will inevitably kick them and that will put your teeth on edge every single time they do it but it's worth it just for the times you can look at them and the rest of the seats are worth it too because they're just so good to sit in they're really comfortable and yet they also feel instantly sporting instantly M whenever you get into them these ones appear to have been trimmed in panda, which is a little bit unfortunate. Thought they were endangered. I'm joking, I'm joking. The standard price for the M3 Touring is just over £80,000, but with the 11 grand Ultimate Pack, which includes things like those seats and some laser lights, the 8 grand M Pro Pack, which gets you the carbon ceramic brakes, and then the £3,000 frozen Portimao blue metallic paint of this car, you're looking at six figures. Something that does come as standard, however, is the vast new gently curved frameless screen inside. It's made up of a 12.3 inch display for the dials and a 14.9 inch touchscreen for controlling, well, pretty much everything apart from the actual driving, which, as we've seen on other cars, is not necessarily a good thing. To be fair, it's not just specific to the M3 Touring because although it's been introduced on this, it will be rolled out onto the standard M3 Saloon and the M4 as well. And it's a bit of a mixed bag, a bit yin and yang, because whilst it's very impressive having this enormous great screen here, I don't happen to think it's particularly stylish. And whilst it's pretty irritating that stuff has migrated up here, stuff like the climate control now, which is just annoying, it was better when it was down here, we have at least still got iDrive to fall back on, some of the buttons here and the M1 and M2 on the steering wheel. We've got the new design for the dials in here, which are, I don't know, they just, they don't appeal to me, to be honest. I don't think they're as legible, certainly, as the lovely old analog ones with the white on black. But they have improved the head-up display because before when you put it in the sport the huge great rev counter thing just this boomerang got in your view. They have obviously listened and now it's just a nice strip along the bottom which works really really well. And then we've got a couple of details which again good and bad so I love this little sort of top-down view of the original M car the M1 in there for the tyre pressures and temperatures but then something I've noticed it's got a little bit more nannying this car as well because before when you used to be able to just go double press and turn everything off in terms of the DSC and all that if you had it set up now you have to read the blurb that it gives you so you have to pause you have to go one two just a little bit annoying. A rather curate's eggish change to the interior then but on balance the retention of the iDrive controller means it's still more positive than negative. 
So it does the everyday stuff well. But what about when you're not at a track day, but you find yourself on a wonderful piece of road like this? I have done a lot of miles in an M4 competition with xDrive, and this really doesn't feel very different at all. It's hardly surprising, really. This has still got the same S58 engine, 503 brake horsepower, 479 pounds foot of torque, just like the normal M3 or M4 competition. We still got that same ZF eight-speed auto, which, yes, isn't quite as quite as crisp as a DCT, but somehow probably fits the character of the Touring even more. The handling balance is still there. The speed is absolutely still there. This is very much still an M car. It's very easy to forget, in fact, that you've got all that load space behind you. The suspension has been retuned a bit, as you'd expect, really. So we've got 10% stiffer springs at the rear, retuned dampers all round. And then we've got firmer bushings in the anti-roll bars at the front. As with the normal M3 and M4, again, this also benefits just from ramping the dampers up very slightly to their sport setting. You can even drive it in Sport Plus on the road. Lots of people will say, oh no, you just leave it in comfort for the road, but actually I think you lose some body control if you don't ramp it up. And this is a car that you can use all the settings in and, and you feel the difference. And they all seem to have a use case as well, depending whether you are driving every day and you want that bit of extra comfort or you find yourself on a road like this and you want the greater body control. And I love that feeling of when you perhaps go for the sport setting on the dampers and the steering and you feel the car just sort of tense slightly. And then equally, when you go the other way, when, when you release it again and it's a bit like, I don't know, you take off a, a tight fitting piece of clothing, perhaps you've had a, a big lunch and you undo your belt a bit. The only real difference you can feel is the extra weight. So this weighs 18.65 kilos as a DIN curb weight, which is about 90 kilos heavier than an M3 saloon. And although as an overall percentage, 90 kilos is not much, it's not as though that 90 kilos is sort of all over the car. It's not like a CSL, which takes its 100 kilos out from across the whole car. That extra weight clearly is focused back there and pretty high up. As a result, you can feel it just kind of where you'd expect, just there on the Exeter corners. It's almost as though when you get on the throttle with particularly the X-Drive in its sort of sport setting, so sending more rearwards, you can just feel as though it's just taking that little moment longer, just leaning a little bit on the Exeter corners. I also think this just turns in perhaps not more softly, but you can just breach the front end grip a little bit earlier in corners as well, which I actually quite like. It's almost um, E90 Saloon versus E92 Coupe M3. That was something I actually rather liked, but it gave it a slightly sort of easier balance, particularly for a road car, I thought. And it's worth saying that although you can occasionally tell where the extra weight is, overall, it really doesn't feel like a heavy car. It just disguises its mass so well. At six or seven tenths, when you find yourself on a road like this, it's fabulous. It's just so easy and clean to drive. When you look in the rear view mirror, <laughs> you remember you've got all that load space. So it rewards on the road and has more practicality than a cupboard full of Tupperware. It does the day-to-day, -day, the 90%. But what about those special occasions? Those days when you swap the humdrum for a helmet? Can it live up to the M for motorsport badge? The answer is short, spoiler alert, absolutely. This really is so impressive round here. If anything, almost more impressive 
than it is on the road, I think. So beautifully balanced, just as you'd want an M3 to be. For the track I have selected, well, track for the displays, so conventional I know. But just as on the road, you've got choices in terms of the dynamic setup, perhaps most interestingly, in terms of how you apportion the power between the wheels. The X-Drive Sport setting is an excellent, confidence-inspiring place to start. It's reassuring somehow. You can feel the power going through those front wheels. You perhaps get just a touch more understeer through the mid part of the corner and perhaps on entry as well. It's still interactive and enjoyable and mobile, but then you also have the option of going to purely rear wheel drive. That that's just fantastic. I love that they just called it two wheel drive, not drift mode. I know there's the drift analyzer, but it has all the purity you could crave. Anyone worried about the fact that this has X drive, there's no need for concern because it feels just beautifully, well, rear driven. No corruption through the steering mid-slide. It's just fantastic and through the longer corners there. Just have it dancing. It's not all about the, the big Larry slides. You can keep it sort of relatively neat but just tease it through the corners and you really do forget. I'll say it again, you forget that you've got all that extra load lugging capacity behind you. You can obviously dial in the M traction control as well which does work really really well dial a bit of it in now you'll be able to see leave it in sort of five there we come into this second gear corner you'll see it just holds it really nicely makes it look like an absolute hero just stops it from getting a little bit too leery too scary and that's a really nice thing so you've got these steps again from going from four-wheel drive sport to rear-wheel drive with that M traction control so you can work up to turning everything all the way off if you want to. This is so much more playful than the RS4 competition that I drove recently. Just a totally different league. I mean, it's what we expected, but even if you leave this in four-wheel drive sport, it's so much more mobile and interactive. And it's just more nimble than something like an E63 estate. The new C63S estate just feels so heavy by comparison. And actually, I'd say probably not as quick as this. I know it's got more power on paper, but the 503 brake horsepower of this is ample, <laughs> I would say. I'd say actually, arguably, this feels kind of better balanced, more friendly, more fun than the M4 CSL that we had around here a few months ago. The Touring really is that good. It just feels dynamically harmonious. And weirdly, I think it's cooler too. But that might just be me. I grew up travelling around in the back of estates, mostly a Volvo estate, a Volvo 240 estate which was obviously rear-wheel drive and had a relatively big engine in it. And my father thought that sliding that around wet roundabouts was rather good fun. He just loved the incongruity of it. So I've always had a soft spot for a Larry estate. Oh, that's so much fun. What a car. I think we all had high hopes for this. It lives up to them. If you knew that the 10% was going to be as good as this, you'd put up with an awful lot in the other 90%. You really would. But there really doesn't seem to be any compromise. From bike, to bear, to bags, to the beach. The M3 Touring doesn't just fit into everyday life. It enhances it. <laughs>